Hello everyone, this is Costia Girl, and today I'm going to give you um, my personal examples of the... Com Ooh, give me a little too much of a show. Okay. Hello everyone, this is Costia Girl, and today I wanted to kind of go through a little comparison of my personal, exa my personal experiences in living in Florida versus Minnesota. <laughs> So first and foremost, what I wanted to say is the weather. Let's get the obvious one right out the way, right off the bat. Okay, so weather. We have two harsh extremes on polar opposites. So in Florida, it gets extremely hot in the summertime, which usually starts around April, May, and tends to end October, November, which is also hurricane season. That's a whole other um, thing in itself. But um, the difference that I felt, because, oh, and then we should go to Minnesota. Minnesota's extreme harsh climate is wintertime. And that runs from, I would say, the end of October until April, May. Uh, we have been known to have snow in May. You have a very short spring. It's usually like a couple weeks and then bam, it's summer all of a sudden. So um, the difference between the two I felt was Florida, even though it's extremely hot, I like to say that it was winter, it wasn't just me who said this actually, but it was winter in every building around. They blast the AC, I mean blast the AC. So you're inside of work or Target or whatever, literally shivering with a sweater most of the time. And you only usually go out during the day when you have to, which is work, shopping, things you have to do. And yes, you usually bring some kind of sweatshirt or something to warm up while you're in the building. But then when you leave, it's extremely hot, you get in your car, what do you do? You blast the AC if it's available to you. You get home, and most places in Florida have access to some sort of pool. You could cool off or take multiple showers if you need to. For me, it was a lot easier to cool off. Now with winter in Minnesota, I felt that it is really hard to warm up. Well, me being someone who easily gets cold. So maybe I'm not the best person to ask them this, but I was freezing. So you would go into a building and yes, it was heated to about 60, 70, which when it's below 30 outside, it still feels really cold. I would constantly layer up wearing two and three pairs of socks layers underneath my clothes, trying to still look professional and still could not warm up. Go home, have heated blankets, but that's the whole thing. I did not like staying inside all the time. However, just to throw it out there, a lot of Minnesotans, hardcore Minnesotans that have been born and raised generations, they do not stay inside. They continue living life as, as normal, so they bike. They sled, they four-wheel, they snowmobile, they snowboard, ski, all kinds of different activities outside. And you really have to in Minnesota, you have to embrace it, or you will just become miserable and depressed. A lot of times in the fall and winter, it's very cloudy. And if you don't just try to embrace it and just have as much fun as you can outside, like I said, you'll be depressed. Uh, one other difference I feel like is in Minnesota, they are hardcore Scandinavian and Native Americans. I guess that is the culture that has began, of course, Native Americans became, became oh, I can't say it, started in this area. And then Scandinavians moved in, I would say, late 1800s, early 1900s, and they stayed for generations. So people here are majority, I would say, still Scandinavian and Native American. However, over the years, we have had a lot of diverse culture move in. So there have been Hmong and Laotian and Liberian and Ghanaian as well as Ethiopian and Somalian. So we've had Russian. A lot of different cultures have immigrated and moved here, which is great. We've actually just recently had a Somalian woman take uh, a seat in office, which was a huge accomplishment for the nation, let alone Minnesota. So it is growing and changing completely different than when I was a little girl here. Yes, I was raised here. My family is initially from the South, so even though I was raised here, 
I was raised very much with the Southern mentality. So that was my blend. But I did, I enjoyed uh, growing up in Minnesota. It's very family friendly. Minnesotans love to, like I said, take advantage of all seasons. So yes, they take their ice houses and trucks and drag them into the middle of a frozen lake where they will spend the night in those ice houses and drill about three feet or more through the ice to go fishing. Hmm. Not for me. There's also a charity thing called the Polar Plunge where people actually jump into the middle of a frozen lake in their swimsuits for charity. Hmm. That's, that's not me. <laughs> I'm not that hardcore. But in Florida, you have people who swim in gator and shark infested waters. Not me. I love going to the beach, I love splashing around, but you'll never catch me in deep ocean water with sharks. As well as I wanted to try paddle boarding. I would not try that in Florida, not with gators. And the people that are locals there are very strong willed and they say, don't mess with them, they won't mess with you. Hmm. I wonder if you can tell a gator that. Look, Mr. Gator, I'm not gonna mess with you. See if it works. <laughs> mm -mm. Not gonna try that either. So yes, that is the cult, the difference between the weather and I guess the what people decide to do. To go back further into Florida's culture, it's very much, uh, there are some native Floridians in Orlando, but it's very, very rare. They're called kind of unicorns because it's rare. Most of them seem to be going on the outskirts of Orlando or moving further north of the East Coast. There are a lot of Caribbean immigrants, which I love the culture, the food, everything that they bring. There are a lot of East Coast as well as the rest of the country that has immigrated to Florida, which I also love. It's made it this great, diverse, place to be. So I love that about the culture of Florida that I saw when I was there. I'm trying to think what else I can say. Hmm. Okay, we can talk about job market. Minnesota is home to headquarters of so many different companies from Target to General Mills to Cargill, Medtronic, 3M, and we could go on. Honeywell, the list just keeps going. So there are a lot of corporate opportunities. However, I think the overall general population in Minnesota is pretty educated. So bachelor's degrees and higher. So I feel like your competition is pretty high, but there are a lot of opportunities here. If labor is more of what you go for, there are a lot of union labor companies here in Minnesota. So you can have a trade be a part of a union and still make a pretty decent wage. Whereas Florida, there are a lot of tourist jobs. That's what the nature of the whole environment is. It's very touristy. So there's, you know, jobs at amusement parks, cruise ships, things like that. Um, they don't pay very much. You could work in corporate of those companies. They pay a little more. I'm not sure if they pay as much as Minnesota but not too far behind. So that is the difference in the job market. People also say, well, you don't pay state income tax in Florida, it's cheaper. Now that's true that you don't pay state income tax out of your checks. However, tolls you pay. And it doesn't matter if you make $100 an hour or if you're making $10 an hour, guess what? You're gonna pay the same amount of tolls. <laughs> Uh, you also pay tax on f clothing. I'm not sure if it was food. Please, if anything's wrong, correct me. Feel free to correct me. Put in your experience or what you felt down in the comments below. But I'm not sure if food had tax. I know that clothing had tax. Again, it's a flat fee tax. It doesn't matter how much you make. Whereas in Minnesota, yes, there is a state tax that comes out of your checks. However, if you make very little, guess what? Very little is going to come out of your check, and most likely you will be eligible at the end of the year to have a somewhat of a refund with state, uh, maybe even federal. 
Uh, there are no tolls here, which is completely different than Florida. There's no tax on food or clothes here in Minnesota, because yes, I did move back to Minnesota. This is where I am right now. So if you don't make very much, you don't have to pay very much state tax. It kind of is based on your income. So that is a huge difference between Minnesota and Florida. Florida, you're still paying a lot in taxes. Now with that being said, we can now talk about the schools. Okay, if you have kids out there, I know that I do. So in Minnesota, I've always thought they had a great school system. I moved to Florida and we lived in a really nice neighborhood, Winter Garden, Windermere area. And for those who know Orlando, that's one of the nicest areas you can live in. It's extremely expensive. And we had amazing schools. The staff was amazing. The schools were amazing. Uh, the resources that the kids had access to from laptops they got to bring home and other um, amenities and things that they had after and before school was awesome. The parents were completely involved. I couldn't have asked for a better experience. I believe my kids had maybe 17 to 19 kids per teacher, which was unheard of for a public school. However, I've heard that there are other parts of Orlando that are not as affluent and unfortunately they still have great teachers I'm sure but I've heard that there is crowding in the schools and it's not the same school experience that we had so I can't really speak to that part because we had an amazing experience it actually made me think twice when I came back to Minnesota when my kids go to schools now that have between 25 and 30 kids per teacher um, I'm starting to kind of look maybe even doing private schools even though I've always been a firm believer that you pay taxes you you know stick with your public school if you don't like something you be an involved parent and try to make it work but I've seen some significant differences in the schools here now I don't necessarily feel they're the best in the country like I used to think although they are great in Minnesota I would say the teachers are very passionate they work very hard you do still have some parents that are extremely involved here. Things are changing. Things are changing. So that's my experience with the schools. Florida had great schools, but it was very dependent on where you lived. Minnesota has great schools. I won't say it doesn't completely depend on where you live as well, but even if you don't live in the most expensive neighborhoods in Minnesota, you still usually tend to have access to great schools, especially with the thing called open enrollment here, where you can sign up if you feel another school in another district is a better fit for your child. You can sign up to have your child go to that school, either be put on a wait list or in a lottery system if it's not uh, available right away. I don't believe you have options to bust them though when you do that. Both places have access to charter, magnet schools, private schools, so there's lots of different options with schools in both places, but that was our personal experience. Another thing is the grocery stores. So I feel like Florida had amazing access to the most ripe, delicious fruits and vegetables, which I miss so much being here in Minnesota in the winter time. And Minnesota does have ripe vegetables if you go to the right stores. I usually go to Whole Foods now where I can still find some really good delicious things, but I do really miss Publix. All you in Florida know, Publix is the place. I miss Publix. Publix is a great uh, grocery store. I would say it's more discounted. They have amazing buy one, get one on products that you use every single day. There's a plethora every single week of BOGOs. They bag your items for you. They have amazing customer service. If they don't have something in their stores, they usually will even offer to ship it to you. They will cook things for you in the seafood or deli department before you bring it home. It's just, it's amazing. It's like the Disney of Disney store, or grocery stores. <laughs> and not to mention, yes, if now we're talking about Disney, we will talk about entertainment. Orlando, of course, is known for its entertainment in regards to theme parks. There are so many different theme park options between SeaWorld, Universal, Disney, and I think there's even Holy, Holy Land? I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. 
Um, there's fun spot. There's lots of different things that you can choose from to do. But outside of the theme parks, you can. There's the meetup groups are so active. There are a lot of transplants there that are willing and able to make friends. Beautiful weather. There's always something to do. Um, you could just hang out at a bar. There were times I would go out by myself. Yes, by myself. Because no matter what time of year you go or what day, it could be a Monday night, a Tuesday night, guess what? There's always tourists in Orlando. It's always lit. Lit. So, no matter when you're going, it's, it's vacation for people. They don't care because they'll most likely never see you again. They're having fun. They can't wait to meet you. They're excited. It's just really amped, hyped, fun. In Minnesota, I've heard if you know places to go, more like neighborhood spots, that there are some fun places to go during the week. However, my whole life, I've never found them. Usually it's weekends or during holiday times when people come out and go out and have fun. I'm trying to think what else I can think of. In Minnesota, the people are really friendly, just like in Florida. There's friendly people, there's not so nice friendly people wherever you go. However, Minnesota's culture, because they have been here for generations, is you find a lot of people who have grown up here their whole lives and they never leave. They've had friends from kindergarten. And although they are friendly, it's really hard to be invited to parties and things that are more intimate, which I mean could be the case wherever you go, but unless they really know you. So you have to put in a lot of effort to be kind of accepted into cliques and groups. Whereas in Florida, like I said, everyone's a transplant and the culture is just so friendly that I seem to find a lot more people that were just willing to accept and welcome you. So that was a big difference too. It depends on how social you are. I also felt like Florida had access to so many places for weekend trips that were beautiful. I would take a cruise for a weekend and go to Nassau or any other part of the Bahamas. Whereas in Minnesota, you can still take weekend trips up north, which is beautiful. Duluth area, the Boundary Waters. Um, but then around that, you just have North and South Dakota, Wisconsin, Chicago, and, and Iowa. Chicago's fun for a weekend. But I just didn't feel like it compared to what you could see and do in Florida. When it comes to housing, Minnesota is extremely expensive. I was looking for three bedrooms for me and my children, and to rent, I would say it was around two to three thousand for to buy. I would say three thousand, three hundred thousand or above, unless you wanted an extreme fixer upper. Whereas in Florida, I feel like for 300000 you could find a beautiful home, pretty new. You could also rent for about $2,000 a really nice house in a really nice neighborhood. Or buy something, or rent in an apartment for that matter, around 2000 and it would be pretty nice. So I wouldn't say it's cheap in Florida, but what you do get is a lot, for the, a lot more for the money than you would in Minnesota. Is there anything else I'm missing? Uh, if, you, if there is, please let me know in the comments below. I would love to make a second video on this or maybe answer some more questions if you guys have them. But yes, that was my personal experience. So don't forget to like the video and subscribe, comment below, and thank you for watching. Bye!